Is the consumption of milk beneficial in the context of bone health and osteoporosis prevention? If we are to believe the dairy industry, it certainly is. For the longest time, dairy manufacturers have been telling us that dairy foods are good for us and that we would be wise to consume a glass of milk in the morning. Supposedly, that strengthens the bones and joints and helps protect against bone fractures and osteoporosis. What's worrying, though, is that a fairly large body of scientific evidence not only questions the validity of these claims, but actually suggests that uh, milk consumption promotes rather than counteracts a variety of different diseases and health problems. One of the diseases that is included in that category is actually osteoporosis, which milk is often being treated as being an effective weapon against. Um, a fairly comprehensive study that was published a few years back is particularly interesting in that respect. Uh, the author of that study conducted a variety of different analyses in order to elucidate how the consumption of dairy foods affect our health. Um, one of the things she did is that she um, uh, grouped together data on hip fracture incidence and uh, milk consumption from many different countries. And that analysis actually shows that there's a positive correlation between the incidence of hip fractures and the intake of dairy foods. So, in other words, the researcher found that the incidence of hip fractures was higher among people who consumed a lot of dairy foods than among people who consumed little dairy foods. Um, correlation doesn't equal causation. That said, it's important to point out that these types of results uh, contradict the claims of, of the dairy industry. So, if if the consumption of milk indeed is protective against um, and prote helps protect against osteoporosis and bone fractures, one would expect to see an inverse correlation, not a positive one. Not only is this correlation positive, but there's a very strong correlation. Um, so basically what we're seeing is that in, in many countries where the intake of dairy foods is fairly high, the incidence of hip fractures is also very high. So that includes countries such as, for example, Sweden, uh, Norway, where I live, and the United States. Her among uh, in countries where, where in many countries where the intake of, of dairy foods is uh, fairly low, the incidence of hip fractures is also fairly low. Um, to the people who who are under the belief that one basically has to consume uh, dairy foods in order to keep one's uh, uh, skeleton strong and healthy. Um, these types of results probably come as a surprise. However, from an evolutionary perspective, uh, it's not really surprising that one doesn't seem to have to consume milk in order to, to, to uh, build a robust, strong skeleton. Uh, because throughout the vast majority of our evolutionary history, no humans on this planet consumed uh, the milk of another animal. So, what we're seeing is that among hunting gatherers, the incidence of hip fractures and osteoporosis is actually very low. Uh, so, hunting gatherers typically have strong, robust bones, and um, yeah, they don't develop many of the they don't develop the the, the typical bone related diseases that we suffer from in in uh, more industrialized nations. What's important to point out, though, is that hunting gatherers do tend to have a fairly high intake of calcium. However, they do get their calcium from other sources. They don't consume dairy foods, but they consume, for example, uh, a lot of vegetables, which contain fairly low concentration of, concentrations of calcium when compared with milk and other dairy foods. However, if you consume a lot of these foods, the, the intake of calcium starts getting, getting masked, or in some incidences, pretty high. Uh, 